This is Randy Babel from Digital Drone Images. What we're doing here, we're actually going to be showing a mock accident reconstruction. The premise of this is there's two cars, and basically one's the T-bone and the other car. We're going to be using the drone that's going to fly up over the head. We're going to do an aerial overhead. Russ Ross is going to do some verticals so that when I actually do the production of this, we're going to show 3D elevations, 3D scoping. Uh, you'll be able to, to get very high resolution Im images from every place that you can imagine. So, plus you'll also be able to take and do measurements and, and whatnot as well as far as tire treads um, and different locations that you would normally use for um, calling up your accidents. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make a call to the actual the, um, the aircraft in the area, let them know what we're doing, and then we'll get underway, we'll, we'll do the actual flight procedure from there, and then we'll put it all together so you can see it. So I've got number of traffic, so I'm in an vehicle, we're operating about uh, five miles to the east of the aerodrome, uh, bearing 300, uh, not above uh, 100 feet for about the next 300 minutes. Okay, so let's get in the air. Now the orbit that's actually being done centers the vehicle and does a perfect 360 around the entire accident scene. I can also fly these in any type of a grid or anything. Remember that there may be power lines or whatever so I can fly up on top or down below. Now that that's captured, what we're going to do, we're going to fly a grid over the top. And we're going to capture a number of images, which we'll stitch together later for some fully stitched images that we can actually use for our 3D modeling and for all of our measurements. Once we've actually done the, the overhead grid pattern on a horizontal level, now what we're going to do is get three different levels so we can actually do our 3D modeling. So we're going to have three different levels on a vertical sphere and we're going to come around the entire thing so we can actually make our modeling. After we do the grid patterns and the verticals and plus the horizontal levels, what we now do is we do a uh, overhead panorama. So we'll set it over the top of the thing, and we'll actually do about 25 shots, so we actually stitch together, and we make one panoramic vision so you can have a look around from overhead. Okay, so now what we're doing, we're actually taking from what's in the air and we're coming down on the ground. What we're doing here, we're taking uh, another series of panorama photos. There'll be about 25 different photos that'll be stitched together to make one orbital photo. I have the help of my lovely dead people in the cars here to recreate the actual accident itself. Um, and also this type of thing can be used as a crime scene. This is one of the cameras we used. We, need, we used another one where we actually go inside the vehicle for once again a full 360 panorama. So we'll start these going right now. Okay, so how do we process all the information that we actually gathered from all the data that we collected, from all the images that we flew from the missions that we did overhead of the crash scene? You can see here we have hundreds of images that we've actually taken, and each one of them can be assessed on their own individual merit, and you can actually pull the information up and you can zoom in and use each one of them individually. But what we're going to do is we're going to reconstruct all those images, we're going to stitch them all together, and we're going to give you detailed analytical information that you can use to actually reconstruct an accident scene. You can see this is a Google map setting. And what we're able to do, we're actually able to turn on the location where we did the shooting because all of our images are geo-referenced located. So here it is, we're gonna zoom into that one location and you can see this 
the darkened area here where it's very clear these are actually from the photos that we took from overhead and you can see just using this model we can actually zoom in quite close to the actual accident point and we can zoom out as well to actually get any point of reference that we want different types of information that we can get uh, one is for measurement obviously we can measure different points uh, for this example here we'll show you the uh, the skid mark or the tire tread leading up to the actual accident location point you can measure that out and it gives you the exact uh, measurement there as far as the number of uh, how much feet um, there is from the for the tire tread or whatever else you want to measure you can do the same for the other vehicle and you can do this all over for all types of different measurements um, from different points that you wish to reference to from the accident location when the lines are being drawn if you want to have a reference point you can actually use a location marker bring it down specify the point onto the map model and it'll actually give you the georeference coordinates and latitude and longitude based on the metadata information that's actually in the images that we take. And you can see here too, this references the Im images taken at that georeference coordinates of so the latitude and longitude. Um, from there, it actually shows you the number of images that are related to that uh, one georeference position that were taken at the crash, crash scene on the day. And with this one spot, obviously there are four images that were taken from different angles. You can then title that information to from that spot, from that marker, um, to whatever information that you want so you can reference back to it at a later date. You can see you can do this in numerous positions. And once again, it shows you the photos that were taken at that georeference point location um, based on the coordinates of latitude and longitude. And again, you can title that information uh, for that point uh, as you wish. Uh, when you have the photos, obviously it's very quite easy to reference those photos. Again, there's four images for this one particular scene that you can actually reference back to from the different angles that we're taking uh, based on the modeling that was actually done for this one accident uh, reconstruction scene. And of course you can zoom in quite uh, considerably uh, to analyze more information in greater detail and move that image around as you see fit. And not only is it line data as far as measurements you can do for lengths, but you can also take area coordinates as well. Um, and again, it tells the exact area uh, that's referenced to for that site. Um, again, you can title that information as you wish. You can turn those annotations on and off. So if you want to clear up your screen what you're looking at, um, it's quite easy to do it's just to clean everything up. Now you can see on the screen is not only the normal two-dimensional map, but also this something that was referenced to plant health. Um, this gives you an RGB uh, indication based on the light levels and you can see there's different light levels they're actually really you can based on heat signatures as well and you can see how the cooler images are in the red because you can see the shaded from the sun in reference to the cold metal on a cold day and you can see the uh, the bodies inside which are quite warm um, has a different uh, different coloring so you can get some quite a bit of information out of that as well and then elevations this shows you a a colored uh, elevation chart um, you can scale that up or down on the side. You can see on the colored charts on the left-hand side um, based on the uh, uh, what the elevation is. The blue is a, a lower elevation. The red is a higher um, elevation. And again, you can turn the annotations on as well to, if you need to reference those um, while you're looking at the, uh, the elevations. 3D modeling is probably the best uh, thing that you can do with this with all the images that were taken because we flew both vertical and uh, horizontal. Uh, with the with the drone overhead, we're able to take and stitch together and give you uh, quite good 3D uh, modeling. So you can use that to uh, spin around the uh, the images um, to really have a look around as if you were um, being suspended in midair and uh, floating around the site. This is a three axis axis reference. Um, obviously, you can zoom in or zoom out and get quite close um, in reference to the modeling that you're looking at. 
Um, and once again, all these images you can reference back to uh, should you need any specific site from a different angle. Because anything you can see here, uh, there was actually an image that was taken that's going to give you that, that vision that you can actually see. You can see here it references back to the uh, the images around the side here, uh, going back to the 2D map. Uh, obviously, all of these uh, th this data is actually gathered from images that are stitched and overlaid. Um, so, if you need a particular reference to one point in a high resolution, essentially you can pull the individual image that was taken in reference to that one point. Here you can see all the individual images. There's uh, five pages of images that were taken, so there's uh, over 150 images for this one reconstruction here. You can see you can click through the, uh, the whole library of the images that are there, and any individual image that you want to take and pull up, just simply click on it, and there are the images. Um, then from that point, you can zoom in quite considerably to get a high-resolution um, reference point. Now, if you recall, when I was doing the aerial missions at the accident scene, one of the missions was to fly the drone overhead in a stationary position and take a series of photos in a 360-degree panoramic setup. From the image that I've taken here, I'm able to put together a panoramic scene which allows you to manipulate the vision so you can control where you want to see at the accident scene. Using the panorama vision, the investigator is able to move the viewpoint around the accident scene to get a full perspective of the area at which the accident itself happened. You can see here you can zoom straight in and still manipulate the scene to rotate to get the angle that you wish. And you can zoom in quite close um, and manipulate the scene again just to move your vision around so you would need to to see anything closer. Remembering too that you have the individual photos that are still stored on file to which you can access individually to get more high-res information. The red flashing spot that you see is it's called a hot spot. That's a navigation point. You can turn that on and off. If you recall the setup here, we took a, an individual panorama from ground level. This ground panorama also allows the investigator to move the vision around at the accident scene to highlight the information that they want to take a look at as if they were there. Again, being able to zoom in to any individual point to get a closer look. Again, you can also turn the hotspots off. Hotspot is an indicator where you can actually go to another point of in your reference scene. Here, this one takes you inside the vehicle. And as you can see with this 360 panorama, you're able to go straight inside the vehicle or take a look around. Again, you can zoom in quite close. And take a look in, inside and outside and move, move around as if you were there within the car itself. This is a much better option than just having a series of photos that are laid out on a desk and trying to reference the point to because once again this allows you the ability to take a good look around once the uh, accident's been cleaned up uh, you still have all the visual reference points um, as if it was still there intact um, for future reference for whatever point you may need. Uh, I set it up also with with different navigational points. You have the drop down box with different scenes that are labeled so you can move around from point to point. Um, should you have these hotspots turned off, and obviously you can move from scene to scene as well. With this particular accident reconstruction, we only took three panoramas. One from overhead, one from outside the vehicles, and one from inside one of the vehicles itself. Ideally, you may want to take and have the two panorama views, uh, one on either side of where the vehicle scene is, one on the front, one on the back, or maybe one other one over the top. Depends on the length of the accidents, where it's at. Depends if it's only one tight scene. Um, really, that's need to be assessed at the time of the site. 
on the ground for the panoramas, uh, panorama points. Uh, it's you probably want to have one at at least four points in the four corners, so you can look around the whole of the scene from the different points, and possibly uh, one or two from inside the vehicles themselves. Having a drone deployed in an accident scene enables a very quick collection of images that can be processed into a tremendous amount of analytical data, which can then be developed into a permanent, interactive visual record of the accident scene. And at any time in the future, the investigating team will be able to create 3D models, do virtual walkthroughs, collect visual evidence, determine distances, areas, and elevations, and make determinations as if they were still at the scene. Please show this video to your team of investigators and then give me a call and we'll get this set up at your department. I'm Randy Babel from Digital Drone Images and to all the men in blue, stay safe out there. I appreciate your service.